thinking about lowering the basement in your Toronto home, but not sure how the process works, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll guide you through the complete basement lowering process in Toronto, from underpinning and concrete forming to waterproofing and drainage. You'll also see upgrades like a new water service, sump pump, and backwater valve, all working together to transform a damp basement into a safe, livable space. Lowering a basement in Toronto always begins with an engineer. The engineer takes precise measurements, reviews the property survey and documents, and designs the underpinning plan. They prepare the structural drawings and all documents required for the City of Toronto Building Permit application. To successfully complete a basement lowering project, you need more than just a plan. You need a reliable underpinning contractor, an experienced crew led by a skilled foreman along with the right construction equipment ensures that the work is performed safely, efficiently, and to Toronto's building code standards. Construction begins with safety as the top priority. The basement is fully cleared, specialized equipment is installed and adjusted, and the underpinning sections are carefully marked on the foundation walls. This preparation ensures the crew can excavate in a controlled sequence and maintain the structural stability of the house throughout the process. We start by carefully demolishing and removing the old concrete floor. Work begins at the first numbered underpinning section, breaking through the slab to prepare for excavation beneath the foundation. The excavation of each underpinning section is done precisely according to the engineer's drawings. The dig extends to the full depth of the existing footing, exposing the underside of the foundation. The bottom surface must be clean, solid, and free of loose soil to ensure proper contact with the new concrete footing that will support the structure. Once the first underpinning section is excavated, it's time for inspections. The engineer reviews the excavation depth, soil conditions, and the overall structural stability of the foundation. After confirming that the work meets design requirements, the engineer issues a written report verifying that it's safe to proceed. With the engineer's approval in hand, the contractor then schedules the first City of Toronto building inspection before continuing to the next stage of construction. Next, the crew installs wooden forms inside the excavated section to prepare for the concrete pour. In Ontario, there are three main underpinning methods, full width of footing with non-shrink grout, full width concrete overpour, and flush with wall L-shape underpinning. For this project, we're using the basic non-shrink method, the standard and reliable approach for residential basement lowering. After the concrete is poured into the underpinning sections, it's left to cure for about 48 hours. Once the concrete has gained strength, the forms are removed and a layer of non-shrink grout is applied between the new footing and the existing one. This ensures a solid, continuous connection and complete load transfer from the house structure to the new foundation. The first underpinning stage is the most critical. Once it's complete, the building is safely supported on the new foundation. From this point, the engineer's on-site inspection is no longer required for each section, but City of Toronto building inspections continue at key milestones to ensure the work meets code and safety standards. After that, the following stages move faster. Concrete demolition, excavation, inspection, forming, pouring, and non-shrink grout application. The same process continues for the remaining underpinning sections. Concrete demolition, complete basement excavation, inspection, form installation, concrete pour, and non-shrink grout application. Once all sections are complete, the entire foundation is fully supported on new concrete footings and the underpinning phase of the basement lowering project is finished. The next stage of basement lowering is rebuilding the water management system. The old storm drainage, sanitary lines and water service are inspected, removed, 
and prepared for a complete upgrade to meet modern standards and prevent future flooding or backups. For the new sanitary drainage system, we begin by checking, marking, and confirming all pipe and rough-in locations. Then, the drainage system is designed and built according to the approved plan and the Ontario Building Code. Using 4-inch PVC pipes for underground lines, and ABS piping for basement rough ends and main stacks. In this project, the new drainage layout includes one main stack, a three-piece bathroom, a laundry connection, a floor drain for the furnace room, a dedicated kitchen drain, and a backwater valve. Each line is installed with proper slope and venting, to ensure reliable flow and long-term performance. Now it's time to integrate the existing storm drainage system with the new lowered basement waterproofing. The old exterior clay, weeping tiles, and downspout connections must be adapted to ensure proper water flow and full protection of the new foundation level. We start by disconnecting the downspouts from the storm system to minimize the amount of storm water entering it. Next, the existing exterior weeping tile is connected to the new interior weeping tile system. This transition is carefully integrated during the underpinning process with the connection cast directly into the new concrete footing. We install a new weeping tile system around the entire interior perimeter of the basement. This pipe collects groundwater and moisture from all areas and directs it to the sump pump location, ensuring proper drainage and keeping the new basement dry and protected from hydrostatic pressure. All collected storm water flows into the sump tank. When the water level rises to a set point, the sump pump automatically activates and discharges the water outside through a 1.5-inch ABS pipe, keeping the basement dry and protected even during heavy rainfall or high groundwater conditions. After the drainage system is installed, we apply a waterproofing membrane to the interior foundation walls. The membrane runs from the top of the wall down to the bottom of the underpinning, covering both the old footing and the new concrete. Its job is to capture any water that seeps through the walls and joints and direct it down into the weeping tile pipe. This way, the system safely collects and removes moisture before it can reach the finished basement space. Basement lowering is the perfect time to upgrade the main water service. Here we're replacing the old line with a new 3 quarter inch copper pipe and moving the water meter from the front wall to the furnace room. This keeps the plumbing organized, makes maintenance easier, and gives the finished basement a cleaner layout. Once all water management systems are installed, including the interior weeping tile, sump pump, waterproofing membrane, new drainage lines, and upgraded water service, we schedule the plumbing inspection. After it passes, the basement is fully ready for the next stage of construction, pouring the new concrete floor. First, we spread four to five inches of clean gravel across the entire basement floor area. Then we compact it using a vibratory plate compactor to form a solid, stable base for the new concrete slab. This step prevents floor settlement and helps keep the concrete from cracking or shifting over time. Next, we install a Super 6 poly moisture barrier over the gravel bedding. This layer blocks ground moisture from evaporating into the concrete slab and the basement air, keeping the space dry and helping the new floor last longer. We always recommend installing 2 inches of rigid foam insulation under the new concrete slab. This R10 thermal layer separates the slab from the cold ground and keeps the basement floor warm and comfortable, almost like a wood floor. It also pays off over time by reducing heat loss and lowering your energy bills. For every new basement floor, we install welded steel wire mesh to reinforce the concrete. It ties the slab together, 
helps control cracking and adds strength to the entire floor system. And now we pour the new concrete floor. The slab is usually three to four inches thick and we use a 32 megapascal concrete mix for extra strength. After placement, the surface is leveled, troweled, and finished to achieve a clean, smooth look that's ready for flooring or a polished finish. With the basement lowering complete, we bring the structural engineer back for the final inspection. The engineer reviews the structure, confirms that all underpinning, concrete, and structural work match the approved drawings, and prepares the closing report for the City of Toronto building inspector. After the structural work is complete, the basement can now be finished, starting with framing, insulation, and drywall. Once the walls and ceilings are ready, we can install flooring, lighting, and furnishings to turn this space into a fully comfortable living area. To make the most of your basement space, you can add a basement walkout. It gives the basement its own entrance, adds natural light, and allows the space to function as a separate living unit or rental apartment. Your new basement can look just like this. Call Strong Basements today for a free estimate or consultation. We stand behind our work with proven quality and fair, competitive pricing. River dark below your home Low walls and stone, no light No room to grow and get near draws The plan marks the lines We start the flow We dig down yeah, we dig down We dig down, build it strong, build it sound Old to new